hello folks my name is Dr. Sayed Plasmi you're watching my youtube channel and today i'm going to be discussing the aa gradient you might have heard about this term usually uh, it is given in detail if you are uh, studying respiratory physiology anyhow it has got very um, important clinical significance aa gradient and um, i'll be going through that so basically aa gradient is this is the term used for the difference between the alveolar and the arterial oxygen gradient. So by formula, it is basically the difference between the concentration of the alveolar oxygen and the arterial oxygen. So what does that mean? Normally, you know, when we are taking breath in, so there is 21% oxygen in the air. So when we inhale that, that oxygen goes inside. So you have got some concentration when this oxygen reaches your alveoli, it has got this 21% oxygen and it has got some pressure. This pressure is the atmospheric pressure, which actually changes by height. So because of this pressure, the oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into your bloodstream. And when it goes into the bloodstream, that oxygen is carried uh, by two methods. So number one is your hemoglobin. So your hemoglobin basically carries 98% of the oxygen. So 98% of your oxygen is carried by hemoglobin because each hemoglobin molecule attaches four oxygen molecules. 1.5% or like 2% of the oxygen is carried in dissolved form. So 1 to 2% of O2 is in dissolved form. So normally when we are trying to measure this concentration of oxygen in the blood that is bound to hemoglobin, we use the, uh, the equipment known as pulse oximeter. So pulse oximeter actually gives you the saturation of oxygen in the blood. So saturation of oxygen in the blood is mean how much your hemoglobin is saturated with the oxygen. And normally we take the values above 92% to be as normal. Uh, as far as the O2 which is dissolved uh, in the blood that is concerned it's not easy to uh, calculate it uh, there are various methods but it's very cumbersome to calculate it so remember that oxygen is carried in these two forms predominantly bound to hemoglobin uh, and that is measured by the O2 saturations at room air which we call as like SO2 1 to 2 percent of the oxygen is in dissolved form now when we are trying to calculate the difference between the alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen, we need to know what is the value of the, of the oxygen in the alveoli and what is the value or the pressure of the oxygen in the arteries. Now that is easy because when we do a cap gas or an arterial pet gas, then we can uh, take these measures. You can sometimes even do it through the VBG, but better is to do it through cap gas in children or arterial pet gas. So that uh, strip gives you the pressure of the O2 and that is used in this formula but what about this one so this is a bit cumbersome to calculate so then we have to use the <clears throat> alveolar, uh, alveolar diffusion equation for that and that equation is a bit like a complicated one but for sake of simplicity remember that to calculate the p a o2 which is the alveolar o2 that is equal to the formula is 150 minus p c o2 divided by RQ, which is the respiratory quotient. Now, respiratory quotient is 0 0.8. So, we can say that this is equal to 150 minus PCO2 divided by 0 0.8. Or in other words, if you want to further simplify it, it would be 150 minus PCO2 uh, times 1.25. So, if you take this PCO2, which is given there in your um, our cap gas, and usually this is uh, the normal values are 35 to uh, 45 millimeter of mercury. Now remember in British system, we use the um, uh, PKA system. But remember PKA has to be changed into millimeter of mercury because this equation would not take any values in PKA. So remember you have to convert your PKA value uh, of the PCO2 into the millimeters of mercury. So the normal value of PCO2 is 35 to 45 millimeter of mercury. This is a normal value, but whatever you get on your uh, um, cap gas, you will input those values into here. So 150 minus this thing would give you the PaO2, and then you can subtract the P 
arterial O2 from the alveolar O2 and you will get what is known as the AA gradient. Now the normal AA gradient increases with age and the formula for uh, the AA gradient is age in years divided by 4 plus 4. So this would give you the AA gradient in age. For example, if a child is 1 year of age, so 1 divided by 4 would be 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 that's why uh, AA gradient would be 4.25. Similarly, if it is 2 years of age, it would be 4.50, 3 years, 4.75. If it is um, his 4 year of your age, the arterial uh, gradient would be 5 because 4 by 4 would be 1 plus 4 would be 5. So, AA gradient basically increases with age. Now, once you have got the uh, these values, AA gradient, you have to see whether these uh, values, uh, whether they are increased or whether they are within the normal limit for that age group. So, if the AA gradient, let me rub this off. So if the AA gradient is greater than normal for age, we call it the increased AA gradient and increased AA gradient means that there are problems either there is a problem with VQ mismatch ventilation perfusion mismatch or there is physiological shunting or there is problem with the diffusion across the capillary membrane VQ mismatch means that uh, there is problem with the uh, perfusion and ventilation so uh, the thing is that whenever oxygen is going inside and reaching the alveoli the same part is perfused as well with the blood so that blood carries the oxygen away but let's say if there is atelectasis let for example that alveoli they collapse so what would happen there would be no oxygen going in those alveoli but still there would be blood passing through that so there will be a sh what we call as a mismatch so blood is going there but it's not getting oxygenated similarly if there is blockade in the uh, blood flow for example in pulmonary embolism so what would happen so there is oxygen coming in the alveoli but because of the pulmonary embolism there is a thrombus in the blood vessels so no blood is coming so what is happening the alveoli are getting oxygen but no blood is coming so no blood is getting the oxygen so again there is a ventilation perfusion mismatch ventilation is there perfusion is not there so again that mismatch would cause an AA gradient which is more than normal for the age then the second thing is physiological shunting now you know shunting is basically of two types one is the anatomical shunting which usually happens in cardiac lesions especially in those cardiac problems in which there is right to left shunt physiological shunting is the phenomena which usually happens in pneumonia and ARDS where what happens is that the alveoli are filled of uh, mucus or um, they are full up of debris so what happens is that when the air comes it is not able to diffuse because the alveoli are already filled with water or with the mucus but the blood is still coming so the blood is passing through those alveoli without getting oxygenated and then it's going back to the um, left side of the heart so there is a sort of physiological shunting that the blood is being shunted without getting oxygenated so that we call as physiological shunting which usually happens in pneumonia and ARDS so that would also cause a uh, AA gradient which is more than normal for the age the third thing are diffusion problems. diffusion problems these are rare conditions in which there will be some problem at the capillary membrane uh, level of the alveoli because of which the oxygen cannot diffuse from the alveoli into the blood so again that would lead to an AA gradient which is greater than normal for age then there are certain conditions in which you can have hypoxemia the there is low blood uh, oxygen but the AA gradient is normal for age that is within normal limits and that simply means that low oxygen in the alveoli is matching the low oxygen in the blood and that usually happens in hypoventilation so for any reason if the child is hypoventilating his respiratory drive is low uh, this can happen for example in neuromuscular disorders which are affecting the chest wall it can also happen in some uh, some sort of polyneuropathies like gulen barre syndrome it can happen in kyphoscoliosis and so many other conditions. 
So hypoventilation because of any reason would lead to hypoxemia with a normal AA gradient for the age. The other um, you know, possibility in which you can have a hypoxemia with a normal AA gradient is at high altitude. So people who are not acclimatized to high altitude and all of a sudden they move to a hill station which is at like at a high altitude. So what would happen is high altitude has got low oxygen. Low oxygen means that your body would get low oxygen. So you would be having hypoxemia with a normal AA gradient. So remember that there are two possibilities when you discover AA gradient, you know, or we try to calculate AA gradient with a patient who is suffering from hypoxemia, which means low uh, blood in the low blood oxygen. And that could be uh, hypoxemia with uh, greater uh, than normal AA gradient or normal AA gradient. Remember, high AA gradient, the most common cause of VQ mismatch, which can occur in a variety of conditions, pulmonary embolism, uh, pneumonia, obstructive lung disease, um, so many other conditions as well. Physiological shunting like in ARDS, diffusion problems because of capillary uh, membrane issues and then the normal AA gradient with hypoxemia because of hypoventilation and because of high altitudes. So remember uh, in any patient who has got hypoxemia where the O2 sets are low, remember you do a cap gas or an arterial blood gas and then you have to calculate the AA gradient, which is basically the difference between the alveolar concentration of oxygen and the uh, arteriolar concentration of the oxygen. This is easy because this value comes through your uh, cap gas strip. This one has to be calculated. And I told you the formula is 150 minus what your PCO2 levels, which are again there on the uh, VBG strip or the cap gas strip. Uh, divided by 0.8 or simply if you don't want to take this value you can simply multiply it by 1.25 and then you would subtract the value that you will uh, get here from the arterial O2 which you get again from the capital U and you will uh, get the uh, difference that is the AA gradient and then you have to determine whether that is uh, normal for age or whether that is greater than the normal for age and I told you the formula for that is age in years divided by 4 plus 4 so that would give you the norm because as i told you that the aa gradient increases with age so you have to see if it is increased uh, you know from more than normal for that age then you have to think about the vq mismatch physiological shunting and diffusion problem and if it is normal you think about hyperventilation related issues and high altitude so i hope uh, this small lecture about uh, calculating the AA gradient, you have understood. I know it's a bit complex, but I've tried to simplify it, it is as much as possible. So if you've got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. I will be more than happy to answer them as soon as possible. Anyway, have a good day. Take care and bye-bye.